And I think it's very unfortunate because there are so many unrealistic expectations kind of forced onto women, especially within the fashion and the fitness industries, where they're being told to look certain ways all the time, but that kind of idea of what they should look like is ever changing. Once again, it's a rather warm and sunny day, which means I am absolutely dying in here because I'm not very good in the heat. So last video, yes, I tickled the idea of potentially reducing the, the frequency of my original content uploads. But obviously I do still want to keep doing them. So I think what I'm gonna do for the time being is I'm gonna produce original content every other Monday, but make that original content video even bigger and longer. So almost combining two into one, instead of doing like a tier list video and a growth guide video separately, I might combine them into one as like a giant growth guide video. Does that make sense? Next Monday, I'm tickling quads. So that's what I think we're gonna tickle. So today is a video obviously. And we're going to discuss something that has been lingering on my mind for many, many moons and something that I see quite regularly brought up in the old DMs where people send me a lot of these workouts. And these workouts follow a very similar titling structure and expectation structure, we'll say. And a lot of these workouts that get sent to me often revolve around the idea of hourglass, like hourglass waist workout, an hourglass beginner workout routine, all these bits and bobs. I mean, if you type in hourglass workout on the YouTube machine, a lot of things with many views come up, which in implies that they are heavily searched and also heavily produced. Lely's on there, Holly's on there, Daisy's on there, Chloe's on there. We got big names that are kind of following this hourglass trend. And it's something I really want to discuss for quite a few reasons, but I'm gonna get into that very shortly. Before we do discuss that, you know what must be done. Obviously, if at any point you decide you like the video, please let me know you like the video by liking the video. 1300 likes is the goal. So if we reach that, that'd be bloody splendid. I would very much appreciate it. If you haven't already, please do consider clicking the red button down below and subscribe to the channel. And maybe even the bell next to it so you get notified I want to upload every week twice a week and if you have a question you want me to answer at the end of the next video please do consider dropping it down below in the comment section for comment question of the week and I shall do so it's hat time because it's summer I've kind of following a bit of a trend I was doing wigs for a bit and the wigs are going to come back don't worry it's just a bit hot for the wigs at the moment but what it's not too hot for it's bucket hat season and I've got a few of them this one has avocados on it so I think it's going to be a popular one so I'm going to split this video into kind of like segments we're going to talk about what the hourglass figure is where it kind of came from this idea of an hourglass shape discuss some workouts surrounding it, some similarities amongst the workouts, and also give my thoughts and opinions on it. So the hourglass figure it is a shape, essentially. It's a body shape that is heavily marketed and almost heavily expected of women to have, where they'll have like a, a slightly fuller kind of bust region, really narrow, small waist, and also maybe a fuller, rounder kind of bottom half to create that kind of hourglass shape, essentially. And it seems from kind of my readings on it that it was kind of heavily popularized and kind of first established really by the fashion industry as one of their four kind of traditional body shapes for women. And I think from that, it's kind of led to this kind of societal norm and expectation that the hourglass figure is something that many people should strive to achieve without really acknowledging and maybe even understanding that a lot of our shape is determined by genetics. And what I mean by that is that everybody has a skeletal structure. Everyone has their, their body, their, who they are as a human, a physical human, a, a physical being, a physical presence. And our shape, kind of the shape of our muscles, the shape of our body, the shape of our hips, all these things are largely determined by that structure that is given to us by genetics. And unfortunately, there is nothing we can do to change our genetic structure. But what we can do is work with our genetic structure to enhance how we look potentially. So that could be many things. You could develop a bit of additional muscle, thus building certain areas of your body. You could maybe lose a bit of fat through a caloric deficit, thus shrinking certain areas of your body. And where you do gain and lose fat first and last it is largely determined by genetics. Like I said, there are things we can do to enhance our body shape and our structure that way. And one of the big things and one of the big issues I have with this kind of idea of like the hourglass figure, it encourages a very one-size-fits-all approach. And what I mean by that is it encourages a lot of people to try and achieve a shape that many people cannot achieve because genetically their body, their structure, their shape does not align with the hourglass shape and figure that is being promoted by a lot of industries such as the fashion one and the fitness one, a lot of creators and influencers such as the ones we're going to go through very shortly. And essentially it kind of gives this idea that if you do not have that shape that you are doing something wrong and if you cannot achieve that shape largely probably due to genetics then something is wrong with you. And in a world where 
bodies and women are so heavily judged on how they look and their appearance. Encouraging a one-size-fits-all approach to physical appearance isn't going to enhance how people feel about themselves, which is in turn going to negatively impact how we think about ourselves, which then leads to a mental health complications, which then leads to body image complications, which leads to self-esteem complications. So many things that could stem from something which could be perceived to be as simple as encouraging hourglass figure workouts on a regular basis for the sake of click and views without fully explaining and helping people understand what will actually determine their shape which is like I said largely going to be genetics instead you leave them kind of blind by implying that everybody can achieve the same thing by following certain workouts not explaining how if they don't achieve it due to genetics that's not their fault but we will further elaborate on that shortly but what we are going to do very quickly is we can go through a few workouts I have seen from Lily Chloe and a few other big creators who are pushing this hourglass figure kind of workout series although some of these videos are a little bit older i'm going to discuss some things and a lot of the similarities you may see within these workouts as well and again straight off the bat you see with lily's video this is hourglass waist and abs in 14 days lose belly fat and tone eight minute at home workout challenge these waist and ab fat loss exercises will help show you how to target and get rid of your stomach fat from home i know obviously lily does further elaborate in the disclaimer about how you can't spot reduce fat knowing full well this is going to be the first thing seen and read by her audience it, it rubs me the wrong way Again, I've spoken about clickbait many times before and its importance within the YouTube algorithm. Yes, I understand that. There's clickbait within reason and there's clickbait knowing that you're doing wrong and trying to cover yourself by plopping this at the very bottom whilst contradicting it at the very top. What you're going to kind of see, which is going to be a very common trend across these workouts, is obviously a lot of ab-based bodyweight movements. Fine, you kind of expect that from at-home bodyweight ab workout. But you're going to see a lot of movements that very much encourage a mass burning sensation with little rest periods and also little recovery between rest. And what I mean by that are things like this movement, like the flutter kicks, which I know is going to be a very popular one because the influencers do love to include it. Because you're maintaining tension for a long period of time, as you see your feet are at no point touching the floor, it's going to lead to a lot of burning. And essentially, this kind of gives the illusion that it's a lot more ab focused than it actually is. Sure, the abdominal region will be utilized to some extent. But this movement here is largely actually going to be the hip flexes rather than the abdominal region. Because when you look at the abdominal region, as I have kind of spoken about before, its primary function is to reduce the distance between your sternum and your pelvis or your pelvis and your sternum which one you choose is essentially going to determine whether you place slightly more emphasis on like upper ab or lower ab fibers that's a conversation for another video whereas this next movement would do more for the abdominal region because there is a slight reduction in distance between the kind of two primary points being the sternum and the pelvis most of these hourglass workouts as you'll see are very basic simple which isn't necessarily a bad thing ab workouts at home no at home ab workout is going to give you that hourglass figure that you are kind of desiring and that you're being potentially promised by a content creator online things like this what does this arm do in relation to the abdominal region whether your arm is stationary or bouncy up and down what additional emphasis does that place on the abdominal region you're going to have some abdominal engagement due to this slight crunch which again is being supported by that the hand anyway because i'm sure lily's neck hurts here but this arm flapping movement is not taking the abdominal region through any additional range of motion nor is it actually encouraging your abdominal region to work any harder it merely looks a bit cooler because there is additional movement there. And then you've got some kind of oblique base work, so this kind of side crunch variation. And in actual fact, there is an argument that has been presented saying working too much on oblique hypertrophy, so the building of your oblique muscles, can actually lead to the appearance of a slightly thicker waist because your obliques typically sit at the side of your body, kind of above the, the hip region, which is obviously in line with the waist. If you're looking for an hourglass shape to kind of pr promote a thinner waist, doing movements that could potentially lead to oblique hypertrophy thus giving the appearance of a thicker waist may not necessarily be the best choices we'll say when you're working a muscle let's say doing the obliques you've got to ask yourself what are you trying to achieve from that so if someone says i want to tone that muscle what do you mean by tone because in my eyes toning typically refers to the showing of definition which could lead to the development of muscle so hypertrophy or the the loss of body fat which is largely going to come from a calorie deficit what other reason would you be working a muscle for endurance purposes potentially but at home workouts when targeting an hourglass waist and abs you've got to ask yourself what are you trying to achieve then we hop over to chloe ting who's obviously doing a very similar thing tiny waist and round butt workout at home 
Hourglass Challenge. And you'll notice here the lot of movements that we kind of previously seen are going to be very similar because at the end of the day there are only so many at-home ab workouts you can do with body weight without including additional resistance such as weights, bands, etc, etc. And when specifically looking at like the glutes for example here, so these glute movements, you'll notice how a lot of at-home glute workouts are very much shortened position dominant. So things like this glute bridge, shortened position dominant. Like this movement, shortened position dominant, where the primary emphasis is placed around the contraction portion of the rep, so where the, the muscle is squeezing the most, which in a lot of cases often results in the most burn, which kind of does further enhance what I mentioned earlier about a lot of these movements are very much sensation based rather than effectiveness based in the sense that they will select movements that burn a lot rather than necessarily work a lot. Great alternatives to include in workouts like this will be something like static lunges, maybe even a split squat if you can get some elevated surfaces like maybe a few books up against the wall or something similar where you have some slightly more lengthened position dominant movements as well which are likely going to yield better results when actually looking at the growth of the area you're looking to target so for example the glutes in this case and like i said earlier a lot of the movements we'll be seeing like for example in this daisy keach workout are going to be very similar there's always going to be like a scissor kick or flutter kick variation included in a lot of these workouts largely probably due to the mass burning sensation specifically around the hip flexors whereas movements like this i would arguably say are actually probably better this is actually decreasing the distance between your pelvis and your sternum here which may place a bit more emphasis on the lower ab fibers whereas things like a flutter kick is going to place a lot more emphasis on the hip flexors and it's just a shame that so many of these workouts are so heavily clickbaited and like i said i understand that clickbait is unfortunately a very favorable part of the youtube algorithm but these are done so in a manner that takes it beyond youtube algorithm and pushes it more towards the realm of unrealistic expectation and false promises which is something i often do have a problem with especially when there's no additional information surrounding what could be expected and what should be expected from workouts like this you may build a little bit of muscle which is fantastic you may burn some calories through movement which is fantastic but it will not change your genetic structure and change your body shape to one that you aren't already naturally adopting through genetics i would just wish some of these creators would maybe go into a bit more detail surrounding how there are more than just hourglass shapes to aspire to just because you don't necessarily have an hourglass shape doesn't mean that you don't look as good as somebody who does i think it's this idea that this hourglass shape is so heavily desired especially from the fashion and the fitness industries that if you don't adopt an hourglass shape that something is wrong with your body and if you currently don't have one that maybe you should do something to achieve one when hopefully people are starting to slowly understand that you cannot change your genetics and you cannot change your body shape and structure but you can enhance it and make it even better than it already is and i think it's very unfortunate because there are so many unrealistic expectations kind of forced onto women especially within the fashion and the fitness industries where they're being told to look certain ways all the time but that kind of idea of what they should look like is ever changing you never know where to go you never know where to focus your attention because one person says this thing and you start achieving this thing or chasing this thing and suddenly it's changed to something else it's just a, a constant trend being set by the media where you have to achieve things that aren't realistic and you have to achieve things that maybe are outside of your scope of genetic potential everybody is born with a genetic hand a genetic makeup you are dealt the cards you have been dealt you may not necessarily be able to change those cards but you can play with those cards instead just because you may have a slightly narrower figure, or just because you may have slightly wider hips, or maybe slightly narrower hips, maybe you've got hip dips, maybe you don't have hip dips. Whether you have something or whether you don't have something doesn't ultimately define who you are, nor does it determine your value and your worth within the world from an aesthetic standpoint, from a beauty standpoint, but also from a personal standpoint. I feel like our worth is far greater and far deeper than merely a shape that we've been given genetically. And it's a shame that so much emphasis is being placed on achieving this shape, which is not achievable for a lot of people and that disappointment is further enhanced when a lot of influencers and content creators do almost capitalize on the potential development or maybe encouragement of insecurities because they know it will absolutely slap in the youtube algorithm likely yield a pretty decent return on investment and although i'm sure that some of these workouts certainly do help many people which is fantastic it almost completely disregards and overlooks the people that it may actually harm and the people it is actually in fact hindering so again it, i'm not saying influencers should never create workouts like this absolutely not what i'm merely stating is that if these titles and this wording and these workouts are going to be pushed into the market and pushed into the social media realm maybe a bit more explanation and detail should accompany them to further enhance what expectations are actually deemed to be realistic to educate people 
as to what really determines your body shape and maybe help further explain what you can do with that body shape that you've been given. So build a bit of muscle on top of it and maybe even the reduction in body fat if that's something you so wish through like a calorie deficit. There are so many amazing things you can do with the body you've been given. There are so many amazing things you can do to enhance your already fantastic shape. Just because you don't have an hourglass figure doesn't mean that you're doing anything wrong. Just because you may not necessarily be able to achieve an hourglass figure doesn't mean you can't achieve fantastic things with the body shape you have been given and the genetic hand you have been dealt. So again, I'm not trying to bash anybody, I never am. I'm merely trying to do what I can to hopefully spread some decent information around the fitness industry and also hopefully prevent people from falling into mental health spirals based on body image and unrealistic expectations, which I have unfortunately done many times before. But that is it, that is the video. And like with every video, we're gonna get into comment question of the week, and it's another fantastic one from Moose himself. Moose has essentially had to reduce the amount of resistance training he's doing due to time limitations and all sorts, due, due to life, I assume. And you'll see, he doesn't want to lose too much of his weekly volume in doing so. And then he kind of further asks, is there another scenario in which you would consider incorporating drop sets or other intensity techniques like cluster sets or supersets? If you're not limited for time, I probably wouldn't incorporate many intensity techniques. The only one I would probably consider, or maybe only couple I would really consider, is compound sets. So basically supersets of the same muscle group, where one exercise might be targeting the shortened position of the muscle, and the next exercise might be targeting the lengthened position of the muscle, or maybe even myo sets. So you do, let's say, a set of 15 on leg extensions to failure, you'd rest 10 to 15 seconds, then you go again to failure, you'd maybe rest again for 10 to 15 seconds, and you go again to failure, ultimately looking to achieve a certain number of reps upon the end of it. So let's say 23 reps, so you went, let's say 15, five, three, something along those lines. And those are the two big ones I would consider including. If you are limited to time and other bits and bobs like that, I don't think supersetting is a bad shout to obviously reduce time. And I don't think drop setting is necessarily a bad shout to reduce time. I do think even in those cases, compound sets and myo rep sets would still probably be better alternatives. Not only are they maybe a bit more time efficient, they're also arguably a bit more effective when it comes to hypertrophy and the development of muscle as well. So hopefully that answered your question. Hopefully that provided some benefit. But that is it. That is the video. Like I said at the start of the video, if you like the video, please let me know you like the video by dropping a like on the video. 1300 likes is the goal. So if we could reach that, I would really appreciate it. If you haven't already, please do consider clicking the red button down below to subscribe to the channel and maybe even the bell next to it so you get notified when I upload every week, twice a week. And if you too have a question you want me to answer at the end of the next video, please do consider dropping it down below in the comment section for comment question of the week and I shall do so. Thank you for tolerating me. Thank you for tolerating the avocados on my head and thank you for tolerating the video.